Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. I've got something cool from OSI Optics. And the model we're looking at today is the MSA-SFP-10GE-SR-OSI. And I think the SR there might stand for short range. I think they make long range and short range versions of these modules. And SFP stands for small form factor pluggable. And uh, the two modules here that I have, this is one that I've had for a while. This is a gigabit module from Cisco. These are pretty common. And of course, the one today that I'm looking at is the 10 gigabit module here from OSI Optics. Now, these are both physically the same. They, they look, well, they look very similar. There are some small differences, but they both plug in to the same port on your switch. You have to have a switch that uh, has these SFP ports on it. And this particular one has RJ45 or Ethernet ports along with a shared SFP port. So I have to use either one or the other. Uh, a switch like this one here, this ingenious switch. Now this one just has four dedicated SFP ports on the bottom. So your switches come in different configurations. But anyway, uh, you have SFP, which is this one, and this is an SFP plus. And they'll both plug into the same port. But the difference is this one here will max out at one gigabit connection speed. And this one is a 10 gigabit connection speed SFP plus module. Now, again, this one maxes out at one gigabit. This one here, uh, your communication rates usually are one gigabit, two and a half gigabit, five gigabit, and 10. And uh, you can have limiting factors, the quality of your cables, the length of your cables, all of those things can uh, slow down the throughput. And uh, most of these work fine with a variety of uh, different uh, switches, but you will want to sort of check and make sure that a particular module is compatible with the switch uh, before you purchase, just to save yourself any headaches. Usually it's not a problem though. And for most people, you know, your standard gigabit ethernet switch here is fine for your home network. Uh, a lot of times just one of these does the trick or if you've got multiple levels in your home and you need more than one switch or you have enough devices these are dirt cheap you can pick up these in uh, all kinds of different port configurations but for a small office home office small business uh, sometimes even a medium business uh, your SFP modules really come in handy because typically you're moving a lot more data in a business environment or a home office, you may uh, do a lot of content creation and you need to move very large chunks of data very quickly. That's where uh, an SFP module and a switch that can handle that would come in handy. And your switches come in all kinds of configurations. Some of them can be all SFP modules. Some can have combinations like this one here from QNAP. This one has a series of eight 2.5 gigabit ports over here, but we have uh, two ports here and two ports here. Uh, each of these two, each of these pair are shared with each other. So I can either use one or the other. I can't use both of these at the same time. And we have an SFP port on the left at position nine and an RJ45 Ethernet uh, connection right here. I keep going out of focus. There we go. So this is a 10 gigabit Ethernet connection and this is a 10 gigabit SFP port. And over here you can see I'm using the SFP module as opposed to the RJ45. Now down here on this ingenious switch, it has a series of PoE uh, RJ45 whoops, ports and these are all 2.5 gigabit. But over here off to the side we have four SFP ports and I can use all of these at the same time. Uh, these are not uh, sharing space with any other ports. And while we're talking about the details of these modules, uh, they use a couple of little laser transmit and receive diodes down in there. You want to be careful you keep those areas clean. And uh, you can see the end here looks a little different than the end down here because they actually make SFP modules with an RJ45 connector on the end so you can actually run copper on your SFP module. But today we're only talking about a fiber optic connection that you find here. Now they all have these little 
catches and they sort of serve a purpose here. If you flip it over and you look, there's a little there's a little catch right here and that sort of helps lock the module in to the port so it doesn't just pull right out. So you take your cable out like this. You want to be very careful you protect the ends. And then you pull that little it's like a little lever and when you push it down a little bit it actually disengages the little locking lug on the bottom and allows you to remove it. And these are uh, hot pluggable so you don't have to disable them or do anything special. Now when you plug it in there and you get your fiber connected you'll hear a little click when it engages and then uh, it's kind of locked in. You can't really pull it out when it's all together like that. So you have to pull the fibers out and then use this little I call it a little lever arm to remove the module from your switch. And like I said, these are typically meant more for a business environment. Uh, if you have a business, uh, you can certainly contact OSI Optics and discuss your needs with them and they will recommend the proper hardware uh, for your particular application. All right, so I've got multiple connections here. So we'll go ahead and plug these in. And if you look real close, you can see two little arrows there and that sort of shows the direction that the data is moving. So the arrow pointing in shows you that basically your data is moving in uh, on the A side or the A channel and then the uh, little arrow there that points out is your B side and just sort of shows you which way the uh, data is moving and you can see the links on this particular switch since they're both green that means I've got a 10 gigabit connection. Now if I plug this other cable in right through here. Now this is a 1 gigabit SFP module going over to a 1 gigabit switch. You can see the color there indicates that it is connected at a lower speed. And another thing to point out, I keep talking about 1 gigabit and 10 gigabit uh, SFP modules. You can go much higher than that uh, depending upon what hardware you've got. So sort of like I was saying earlier, you've got to match the switch capabilities with the uh, module capabilities and even your fiber has limitations. So you need to make sure you get the proper fiber. OSI can help you with all of that. So if you have any questions or you're not sure, you know, you're setting a system up for the first time, uh, they can certainly help. So I'm just showing you that this stuff really is fairly simple and it is pretty much plug and play, but you've got to make sure you've got the right hardware so that everything plugs and plays nicely together. So uh, as far as your speeds go, uh, there are a lot of things that affect that. I always say your mileage will vary. Uh, the quality of your cables, the length of your cables, uh, if you've got any other bottlenecks on your network, and uh, how much traffic is on your network, all of those things affect your connection speeds. So that just sort of shows you, you know, what an SFP module, SFP plus module, uh, you know, what those are, where they're used, how they're used, why they're used. Uh, that should give you an idea if that makes sense for your application. And these units here from OSI right now, they're about $65. And again, depending upon the model and the connection speed, things like that, your pricing will vary. Okay, so when you purchase your components from OSI, uh, where's the bang for the buck? What else are you getting in addition to the components? Well, there's some things you should know about OSI. One is they are a US-based company and the headquarters is in Santa Barbara, California, along with the warehouse. They've been in the uh, compatible transceiver business for over a decade and their optics are deployed uh, in some of the largest networks uh, you'll find anywhere uh, on earth. OSI also only deals with tier one suppliers and they only use tier one uh, TOSA and ROSA or TOSA, ROSA lasers. That's your transmitter optical subassembly and your receiver optical subassembly. Bah, hard to say all that. Uh, TOSA and ROSA is what I say, lasers. Uh, of course, that's the most critical component of any transceiver. And uh, this is the same stuff pretty much that your OEMs use. Now, they also have one of the lowest RMA rates in the industry, uh, and that's around 0.2%. That's because they test every unit out 
uh, before they ship it out. Now their optics are also coded, uh, they're coded compatible so that they function just like or even better than the original OEM optics. Uh, they own the code database and they're able to manipulate it in real time if they need to. Uh, they can also troubleshoot at your location or do it remotely and uh, even work on custom coding solutions uh, as necessary. And I'll post a link uh, down in the description, a couple of links actually, but one of them is to a, a nice little article from Gartner and uh, it talks about uh, OSI Optics uh, as a top trusted optics provider. Uh, it's titled How to Avoid the Biggest Ripoff in Networking, so you might want to check that out. Okay, so now we'll do a little bit of testing. We'll move some data back and forth and see how these SFP Plus modules from OSI Optics perform. And to verify that my connection speeds are what I think they should be, I logged into the QNAP switch here, and I can see right over here that my ports 9 and 10 that I'm using Port 10 has the SFP module, port 9 is using the Ethernet, but you can see the connection speeds are showing 10G on both. And then I can monitor my 10 gigabit traffic on this side, and there's not much happening at the moment. So that's the QNAP switch, and I can click over here to the ingenious switch where I've already logged in, and this shows the speeds of all the ports, and the last four ports there are the uh, SFP ports. And you can see that lighter color. It's a really a pale green, but it almost looks yellow on the legend right there. You can see that shows that it is a uh, 10G connection speed. So this just verifies that the switches are showing that the ports are connected at the proper speeds. And again, it's connected at that speed. That doesn't mean you're necessarily moving data through there at that speed all the time. That's just the maximum speed. Uh, and I'll, I'll do some testing here. But we'll see that our speeds are actually going to be uh, a little less than that. Now, uh, on my other computers here, since they do not have, what's going on with my focus here? There we go. Uh, I've got adapter cards, so this is a 10 gigabit adapter card in one of the computers. This is a 10 gigabit adapter card for the other. So the computers are connected to these two switches, and this NAS unit here actually has a 10 gigabit uh, connection on the back of it so I can connect at that speed also. So uh, I'll move some data back and forth. Uh, the limiting factor here is going to be the uh, speed that I can read and write to these hard drives. These are the regular spindle old-fashioned style hard drives. So there's a pretty good limitation on your speed there. The 10 gigabit connection on this would really allow uh, multiple users to move data back and forth perhaps a little more efficiently. So this isn't really going to tell me a whole lot on moving data, but what I'll do is I'll use iPerf 3 to show the connection speeds. And if you've never used it, iPerf 3 is really nice. It's, uh, it says right there, the ultimate speed test tool for TCP, UDP, and SCTP. But you can download this and uh, it's really nice. Okay, so this computer is set up as my server, so it's listening. And way down in there in the back is the 10 gigabit adapter card. And over here in this computer, we've got the other adapter card. Easier if I open that up. So there's the other 10 gigabit adapter card there. And both of those, uh, both of those are connected through these two switches. So server is listening. This is the client. Let's go ahead and run this again and look at the speeds and that looks pretty good and remember like I said you're going to see uh, slightly less than 10 and that's pretty consistent we'll run it again yeah that looks good okay so this test uh, will involve moving a 7 gig file from the computer over here to the little NAS server and I'll run the iPerf 3 at the same time and we'll watch the traffic here and see what it does. So let me get the file transfer started first. Replace the file. Okay, so that's moving and then the iPerf 3 will get it going also. And we should see a pretty good jump there. 
and there it is. As soon as the iPerf 3 is done, which will be just a moment, okay, so it quit, so we should see the traffic drop back down, and there it goes. But we're still moving the file. Now, again, the speed limitations there are from the capability of the hard drives, so that's the limiting factor there. Well, I would say performance-wise, uh, they're just fine. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. And again, you know, if you're a business owner or you have an enterprise application, uh, contact OSI Optics and they can certainly steer you in the right direction for your application. Uh, these will work for home use, but like I said, <laughs> really massive overkill. So this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.